Now, what are the, when you say there seems to be a correlation, I mean, statistically, what are the, what's the deviation from randomness that someone focusing on having more ones would happen? Is it like two to one randomness or is it a 10 billion to one or? Well, the, the last analysis that I did, which looked at all of these experiments, the, the, the final analysis is 50,000 to one. The odds against chance are 50,000 to one that the behavior of the random number generators would go in the direction that they did, that were consistent with what intention was wishing them to do. Now, what about the people who you know, they criticize? They say, well, you know, that's just statistics. That doesn't really prove anything about the mind-matter interaction. How would you respond to that? All of science now, all of empirical science, is based on statistical analyses because nothing ever works the same way twice. And this is especially true when it comes to human behavior. I mean, so an example is, well, why are people interested in sports just obsessed with statistics? Because human behavior is variable. So when we look at a good baseball player and they have a, say, a 400 hitting average, that's incredible. But all it means is 40% of the time they'll, they'll get a base hit. So why do we say, well, so what? You know, they're not getting it 100% of the time. We understand that some forms of human behavior are simply difficult to repeat, even among world-class athletes. Here, we're dealing with something that's much more subtle. We're dealing with a direct mind-matter interaction. And so you're not going to see it 100% of the time. And as soon as that's the case, you have to deal with statistics. Statistical arguments are used everywhere in science. And I understand that if, if you're, you're not a fan of mathematics and you don't trust statistics, maybe think about baseball and think about why statistics are so important in sports. And it's purely because of the uncertainty in sports. Excellent. Um, so do you have any theories on the mechanism that makes when someone's sitting there with their intention going, I want more ones than zeros? Do you have any, because, you know, what's, is it just magic? Is it, is it just spookiness or do you have some sort of theory as to why someone's intention which seems to be an internal intangible thing can affect a, a random event the, the way i think about what's happening with in the random number generators or in intention in general why does intention leak out and get out outside my head somehow i think about it as the the relationship between mind and matter what is that relationship well, one way of thinking of it is we, we take a ribbon, and on the outside of the ribbon we write the word mind, and the inside of the ribbon we write, write the word matter. So they're tightly correlated. And in fact, we know that. If you look at an EEG or you look at a functional MRI picture of the brain, what's going on inside the head is tightly coupled to what our subjective experience is like. So it's like this ribbon. If you shake the ribbon, the mind and matter will kind of shake together. So they're related in some strong way. But since they're two sides of the ribbon, one part, it's not the same thing. They're two sides, and they can't interpenetrate somehow. So they're, you know, where does the mind and matter connect? So I would say all that you need to do is imagine that the ribbon that we've been looking at was slightly misconceived. It actually is not a ribbon. It's a ribbon where somebody put a half twist in it and reconnected it, and it makes it a Mobius strip. So now if you're looking at the matter side and you're saying, well, how in the world can it connect to mind? And you keep tracing along this thing, and you find uh, suddenly you were working on matter, but you've ended up on the mind side. Well, why is that? It's because a Mobius strip has one side. And it looks like a ribbon from a distance that has two distinct sides, but it really isn't. It's the same thing. And it looks different depending on your perspective. So when my mind is thinking about a random number generator, the mind and matter on the subjective side are actually the same thing. And so I think about a certain way, and it is expressed in a hunk of matter, because the hunk of matter actually has some mind in it as well. But they don't, we don't see that. You know, we see our own mind very clearly because of our perspective on it. We don't see that there's any mind stuff in a random number generator, but it's there. So how um, a realization that there's this, that, that it's a Mobius strip, what... What impact do you think that has on uh, people, cities, countries, nations, planets? Is there some sort of 
scaling factor on that whole thing? Because again, people are still saying like, all this stuff is great, Mobius strips, that's wonderful, but I'm still living in the world I'm living in and, you know, trying to get a, again, a, a kind of a big, a big picture of what, you know, what does this really mean? Because, you know, when they first came up with the quantum stuff, it was like, what does this really mean? And a hundred years later, we're still asking that question and, and uncovering it. So right. I'm just sort of asking it again. Well, uh, one implication of this is that people might think, uh, well, if my wishes really can push the world around, then how come I can't win the lottery? How come my wishes don't stop war? How come all kinds of things don't occur? And part of the answer is that, that each individual is a really small drop in the ocean. And so while our intentions do go out, and we see in the laboratory, we see these things in the laboratory because we're working typically with an individual and one device. And we, we by design, exclude the rest of the world as much as we can, although you can't really do that. That's the design of the experiment. But when you're, you're dealing with the universe at large, and I, my intention does go out, it ripples out and affects the entire universe, most of the universe doesn't care. You know, it's, it doesn't want to respond. It's off doing its own thing. So from a perspective of thinking about everything as having some form of intentional goal, some kind of wish, whether it's an electron or human or anything, it has some kind of a push out into the world. It's all happening at once. It's all mixing together. And you need to have an enormously strong push in order for that ripple to be felt by anything, unless you happen to be predisposed towards it. So, for example, in, in a case of somebody, of an individual and in a random number generator, I specifically focus them on that device. And I look at the device at very specific times, and I know what I'm looking for. And we see these small effects. They're, they're there, but they're small. You can say then, well, what would happen if we had a billion people all doing the same task, with all focusing in on something, a random number generator or, or person or anything, would you get a larger effect? And the answer is probably, but the form of intention would have to be extremely coherent in order for it to have an impact. And the reason is that you imagine that intention is a wave-like structure. If you have more than one of those waves, then the two waves can interfere. They, could, they can destroy themselves if they happen to interfere in the wrong way. So if you have a billion people thinking the same way, the same time, in the same manner, I imagine that you would end up with a very large effect, even in random number generators, which are just basically hunks of physical stuff that's getting pushed around. Does that prove that land effects matter? Proof is not a word that is used in science. We, we can show evidence for. We, we can create a certain degree of confidence that an effect is what it appears to be. We can make measurements. So what we can say is that we have high confidence at this point that the nature of randomness changes when large-scale world events occur. It, it's not clear what it proves yet because it's not even entirely clear what the proof would be of other than somehow mind and matter are connected or reflect each other is probably a better way of putting it. Oh, I think the, the mathematics for, for chaos theory and complexity theory are very solid. Uh, is it a new wacky idea? All new ideas are wacky until they become accepted and then suddenly they become conservative and orthodox. So, at, of course, in, in the beginning of every new uh, application, or especially any idea that is coming off from the side, will be perceived as wacky. And then somebody will get a Nobel Prize and it's not wacky anymore. Which is not to say that all new ideas are equally valid, because some of the wacky ideas coming in are, in fact, quite wacky. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's only through the passage of time and the, the value of science, which is to continually confirm that the idea is true or not, where we begin to get a sense of what is likely to be true versus what is likely to be a fantasy.